Well, let's speak uh, to the former England winger, uh, John Barnes, uh, who joins us live on TalkSport. Good afternoon. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hi, John. Very, very well, John. What yeah. are your thoughts? What are your feelings around the legacy of Gareth Southgate and what he did in the job? This whole idea that he's failed is nonsense. Sir Bobby Robson, who got a knighthood, got to the semi-final. He never got to a final. Would we say that he failed? You know, it's not just about, you know, you can only have one winner. What do you have to do is maximise the potential of this team. And if you look at the players in other, in other countries, I don't think we are, the, we are the best players in the world. I don't think we've got the best players in the world. There are other countries. For me, Portugal underachieved because the players they have. So to maximise the potential and get to the final of two Euros and a semi-final, yes, OK, we were very fortunate in most of the competitions he played in, in terms of the side of the draw we were in. But he has no control over that. You can only play who's in front of him. So I believe if we were in the other half of the draw, we wouldn't have got to the semi-final, never mind the final. But that's by the by. The reality is he got to the final. Yes, we didn't win, but I don't see it as a failure. John, I just want to pick up on something you said there. I, I agree with you to a certain degree. But I don't know how you can say we don't have some of the best players in the world when we do, clearly. I don't think we're all one delusional second, in thinking that we should win. No, 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 no. Not at all. I didn't say we... There, there, there are other teams with players equally as good and better than us. I'm not saying we don't have some of the best players in the world, but the way people are going on is if we have the best players in the world. At Man City, at Arsenal, at Liverpool, it's the foreign players in England, which really gives the Premier League it has. So we have very, very good players. So are you saying that these players are better than Rooney, Gerrard, Lampard, Cole, Beckham, Ferdinand, Terry? No, they're not. And they didn't win. So why do we expect automatically that we should win? What he's done, he's got to finals, he's got to the semi-final, he's maximised the potential. But we, when I say the best players in the world, I mean the very best. I don't mean some of the best. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that one. But we are blessed with the talent right now. And, and, and do you think that that is maybe why there was so much pressure on Scarra Southgate to deliver something a little bit more? We, we kind of had this argument a little bit earlier on in the show, that maybe he was hounded out of the position. Maybe he felt he needed to step down because of the, the you know, the anger that many people sh were showing around the way that, that England were playing. Do you feel maybe some of the criticism levelled at him was unfair? I mentioned 20 seconds ago, we have had better players. I mentioned Gerard Lampard's goal, Terry Ferdinand. They didn't win. So why are we now saying that this team is better than that team? It's not better than that team. They were better players with more experience, winning Champions Leagues, but this is a very, very good team. I've got mm. great potential. But really, I'm asking so course, you about, about is, Gareth's thought process. Do you think he's decided to step down because nah. of the criticism? Oh, absolutely. I don't think so. I think he's, you know, after four tournaments, it's a long time. Maybe he, I don't think it's necessarily because of the criticism. I think it's because, you know, he's been there for probably longer than the majority, if not all England managers. And maybe he wants something else. I don't necessarily think it's just a criticism. Maybe he feels he's taken his team as far as it can. And in that respect, I think he had the right um, to leave on his own terms rather than being pushed. So I think it's a win-win for everyone. I think new manager coming in now will have a lot of good young players to work with, don't get me wrong, but we have to then decide, are we then just going to be like what Gareth is, a manager who picks the players, makes them feel good, or a manager who's going to say, this is the way we're going to play. We're going to play a system and the players have to fit into the system, which is what Spain did. Because Spain didn't have the best players. Bucarella, you know, you're looking at um, Laporte who plays in Saudi. You've got five Real Sociedad players. We have to resist the urge of saying, let's just pick the best players, put them in and say, go on, play. Or a coach who's going to say, this is the way we're going to play and you have to fit it to that system. So for me, Graham Potter would be the one for that. Interesting. Graham Potter, a you, lot of that's fans. That's what you think. Uh, listen, I, I feel like he's a very good coach. I feel like the time at Chelsea clearly burnt his reputation with a lot of people. But until he showed up at Chelsea, we're all saying he's the, the best thing since sliced bread. He had a bad experience there. Suddenly... Everyone's saying he's a terrible coach. I think that is unfair because I, we know a lot of big name managers that have had bad jobs at various clubs. They've still bounced back. So clearly there is a quality there in terms of the work that they do. But, but it's interesting you say uh, Graham Potter. Do you believe it has to be an England manager, whoever is next? An English manager, excuse me? An English manager? I don't think so, but I think it has to be a manager who's very similar to Gareth in his soft approach with the players rather than someone who comes in to upset them. Because England, England, you've got, I think you've got managers who, you could Jose Mourinho, you look at, you, you know, lots of Thomas Tuchel, they're great managers, but they upset players. Now, if you're in an environment where the players get upset, they're not going to perform. And I think that the England players liked Gareth because he was a nice guy and he didn't upset them. 
So therefore, I think it has to be a manager like that in modern football, rather than a manager that's going to come in and be dictatorial, particularly with England, where I think you have characters who like to be liked, who like to, you know, you go out and you play and I'll just massage your egos. Whereas I think there are better managers than, than Graham Potter, but I think you have to have the balance right between a dictatorial manager who's going to be very strong and very hard and a manager who's also going to be able to man-manage the players with good tactics. But John, you were saying there before that, you know, I agree with what you're saying about the likes of John Terry, Gerrard and Lampard and that before previous teams and people suffer with recentism and forget the quality we had before. But surely we're not all delusional in thinking we should be doing better with the players that we have now, with the complete squad that we have. Because overall, this squad underachieved, really. Yes, we got to a final, but all the teams in the in the tournament weren't great, were they? Let's be honest. We didn't beat a well, Spain were. team that had Iniesta, Xavi. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be memorable, are Absolutely. they? Absolutely. So, therefore, I don't think that the international teams are as strong as they were before. Look at France with Zidane and Henri and Turam. So, I'm, I'm taking that point. I am taking that point. But don't forget, Jude Bellingham has been around for two years. Phil Foden has come on the scene in the last two years. Cole Palmer... Didn't make it at Man City, so he's been at Man. So he's been, went to Chelsea for one year. These are young players. So then, whereas in a few years' time, when they have more experience, yes, we've got Carl Walker and some of the older players. But if you're talking about our young players, they still have only been around for one or two or three years, and they're very inexperienced from an international perspective. So if this team stays together, and all of a sudden Paul Palmer is 25, 26, you know, 27, been playing for three or four years, then I think we could put more pressure on them. So the future does look bright, but in terms of expecting this team automatically to have won, and the fact that they got to the final and didn't win, we now class that as failure, I think that's a bit harsh. John, I know you, of course, take note of everything that happens within society as a whole. I just wondered how important you think it is for the next manager of England to be a little bit like Gareth Southgate in the way that he dealt with some of the bigger issues in society, the way that he gave players freedom to talk about some of those things. How important is it that we have someone who can be an ambassador for the country away from just a coach? I don't think in terms of dealing with societal issues is, is necessarily the, 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 the issue. It's about making the players comfortable. So if he wants to give the players the opportunity to do that, I don't think Gareth has to necessarily come out and you know talk about other issues. Um, I don't think that's, that's necessary. It's about keeping the players happy. So if he wants to, if he allows the players to do what the players want to do, in terms of them feeling responsibility, yeah, that's fine. But the most important thing is for him to win football matches and making the players feel comfortable to win football matches, but also being strong enough to say to the players, "I'm in charge." So if I'm going to have to be Kane out. And I'm going to have to drop Jude Bellingham for whatever reason. That's what I'm going to do. But of course, the balance is important because we know managers who would be very, very hard on them and then that could upset the, the, the harmony. Or there are managers who could be too soft. And people have said Gareth has been too soft at times. And being too soft, he's got to two finals and a semifinal. So I have no issues with him. Earlier on, we were talking about Jude Bellingham and his PR. Uh, it feels like in, in the last couple of days, there have been negative stories around him for some unknown reason in my eyes, you know, stories that he doesn't get along as well with uh, many of the squad, for example, that, that other squad members were unhappy with the way that his media was portrayed by his sponsors and, and the way that he celebrated with his who else statement, for example. Do you feel like those stories just inevitably come out after a major tournament to, I don't know, make a scapegoat of a player possibly? But it comes out if things don't go well. Had they won and they could have won, then the narrative would have been different. That's why I don't listen to all that noise in terms of what people are going to say. You know, it's about the performances. And, and to, be, to be fair, he didn't perform particularly well, but neither did anybody else because he's still a young player. And maybe we, all, we expect too much from, from a player because he's done so well Then all of a sudden we thought that he'd be the finished article. Look at Yamal. What a player he was, but in the final, he was non-existent. And maybe we expected, because he's done so well for a short period of time, that all of a sudden it's going to be... This, it, it's a work in progress. This England team is a work in progress, and it'll be a fantastic opportunity for a new manager to come in and stamp his authority and his style on this group of players because they're young. Um, but with Jude Bellingham, I have no issues. I know you said your preference is Graham Potter, but I did want to ask you about some of the other possible candidates. We've heard rumours around Mauricio Pochettino. Clearly, some fans feel like we should go after a Pep Guardiola or a Jurgen Klopp. There's also the likes of, of Eddie Howe, Gary O'Neill, Michael Carrick. Would any of those be suitable or unsuitable in your eyes? Well, I don't think Pep is going to manage England or Jurgen. So the others, Eddie Howe, I think would be a good choice. Um... Of course, you're talking about Pochettino. We know Pochettino's a strong manager. If he comes and he shouts at players and he drops players and he says, I'm going to be very dictatorial, will they respond to that? That's why I think you need the right balance. 
So for me, I think that Graham Potter or Eddie Howe, the right balance in terms of the type of managers they are, the type of people they are, the, not just in terms of their tactical ability, but their man management style. I think that one of those two will probably be the um, the best. But Eddie Howe has a job at Newcastle, so that's why I'm leaning towards Graham Potter. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.